quality video editing takes hours. It becomes even worse if you don't have a few tricks up your sleeve. So in this video, I'll share six tips to help you 2x or maybe even 10x your video editing workflow, depending on how well you utilize the information. In any case, by the end of this video, you should be able to edit faster in CapCut, saving yourself from excruciating hours of video editing with little to show for it. Hi, I'm Mr. Matt. I make videos on video editing. If you find that interesting, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Tip number one, repo delete. Do you use keyboards for your video editing or you simply use your mouse? If you're not using your keyboard, you're missing out on a great deal. Using keyboard shortcuts is a huge time saver. There are tons of shortcuts that I use to edit faster. You don't need to be an advanced typist to use keyboard shortcuts. You can locate your keyboard shortcut by clicking on shortcut at the top right corner. I use shortcut number one. You can check out the other options to see what works for you. You can also customize the shortcuts to your preferred keys and click on save when done. With my left hand placed on my keyboard and my right hand on my mouse, I feel like I have superpowers whenever I'm editing. For instance, I can change to select mode by pressing A on my keyboard or change to split mode by pressing B. Instead of hovering my mouse cursor around looking for the split tool or the select tool. My favorite shortcut is the repo delete. Delete left is Q by default, while delete right is set to W. How do they work? You can use them to trim clips on your timeline. If I press Q, it deletes all the parts to the left from my playhead. Similarly, pressing W deletes all the parts to the right from my playhead. For the regular person, what I just did in one step would have taken about five to six steps. You'd have had to select the clip and then select the split tool, go back to the part where you wish to split and then click on delete. You see, five to six steps. But with the ripple delete option, just one press of a button and that part is out. Also, I customized my shortcuts to split the clip whenever I press B. So if I press B on my keyboard, it just splits the clip right where the playhead is instead of selecting the split tool. So since I use the split tool less often, whenever I press B on my keyboard, it just splits the clip right where the playhead is. Alternatively, I use Ctrl B as the option to select the split tool. Tip number two, using proxies. If you're editing on a slow computer, then you might start to notice lags in the playback after adding multiple effects. Even if you're not using a slow computer, editing high resolution videos utilizes so much of your computer resources. Experiencing lags during editing is one of the biggest time wasters ever. And that's where proxy is coming. A proxy video is a duplicate transcoded file of a project source footage that is smaller in data size and lower in resolution than the original video file. Video proxies are used to replace raw footage files during post-production for more efficient and faster video editing and rendering. You could choose to edit your videos in low resolution. However, that will also mean that you have to manually change back to the right resolution before exporting. But with proxies enabled, you don't have to do any of that. To know if proxies are enabled for your video, make sure no clip is selected and at the information bar, you will see if proxies are enabled or not. As you can see right now, my proxies are turned off. To enable proxies in CapCut, click on the aspect ratio option just beneath the player, then click on customized. Thereafter, click on performance. There you'll be able to toggle on or off proxies. You'll also be able to choose the resolution you want for your proxies. 720 pixels should be okay if you have a decent computer. On a slow computer, I advise you to choose 540 pixels for an even smoother experience. Tip number three, cache. Another way you can make sure you get a smooth playback is by enabling auto render. To do that, click on menu, settings, and then performance. Thereafter, toggle on the auto render option. That way, stickers, emojis, and text play smoothly. If used together with proxies, you should see a drastic improvement in your playback and editing workflow. If you're noticing a slow playback still, you can simply select all the clips in your timeline, right click on them, and then click on render. Bear in mind that cache files use up your hard disk space. By default, it is set to auto-delete after 30 days. However, if you are out of storage, you can manually delete them after finishing and exporting your project. Tip number four, select in and out points. Instead of dropping a long clip onto your timeline before trimming out parts of the clip, you can select the in and out points right in the media library before dropping into your timeline. That way you'll save yourself from the stress of editing on the timeline. And to do these shortcuts come in handy again. 
The shortcut for selecting the in point is I, while the shortcut for selecting the out point is O. But first you must select the clip on the media library and then press I on your keyboard. It selects an in point, then play it until you notice the point where you want the out points to be. Press O on your keyboard and then drag the selected part down to your timeline. It saves you time so you don't have to do the trimming on the timeline. Tip number five, compound clips. You can nest multiple elements together to form a compound clip and then add effects or transitions to them all together. Compound clips can contain video and audio clips, stickers, text, emojis, and even other compound clips. In this scene, I have text and emojis, and I want to create a panning movement. However, I do not want to have to do it for each of the elements and clips. Therefore, I'll select all of them, right click, and then click on create compound clip. Afterwards, I can simply animate the entire compound clip as desired. Tip number six, auto caption. If you need to add captions to your video and then you want to type them manually, it's going to take you hours, even if you're an advanced typist, uh, depending on how long your video is anyway. Why do you have to do that in the first place when you can simply let a CapCut AI automatically create your caption? To allow CapCut to create your caption for you, select your footage, go to text, auto caption, and then select your language. Then click on the create button. Wait for the AI to process your speech. It's that simple. This feature is pretty decent in accuracy, but you might notice a few mistakes. Just proofread to make sure everything is intact, everything is perfect. And if you find everything perfect, just go ahead and stylize and format your text the way you like it. Those are the tips that I have to help you improve your video editing workflow. If you have a few tips that you want to add to these tips, just let me know in the comments. If you find this video interesting, make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.